Good morning, everyone. My name is Shirley Torho, and I am I'm seeing the healthcare track this morning. Um, today we have a series of wonderful speakers. We have five speakers for you, and we can't wait for you to meet all of them. Our first speaker is Johnny Hatch, who is the Senior Solutions Engineer at Nylas. And so Johnny will be with us to talk about powering COVID vaccinations with calendar APIs. Before Johnny starts, I'd like to introduce myself. My name again is Shirley Torho. I'm founder of Innovate Access Consulting, which is a public health strategy firm that deals a lot in research and evaluation as well as program design. And so I'm, ex I'm excited to be here with all of our wonderful speakers today. Johnny? I'm sorry, Shirley, I was getting my headphones in. No worries. Please feel free to pull up your slides when you're ready. All right. It looks like they're up now. Yes, they are. Thank you. All right. All right. Hey, everyone. I'm Johnny Hatch. I work at Nihilus. I've worked here for about three and a half years. Uh, we are an email calendar and contacts REST API for bi-directional syncing from providers like Google, Microsoft, iCloud, and the long tail of like any IMAP email providers. And what I'm going to be talking about today is how Nihilus powered um, some COVID vaccine scheduling using our out-of-the-box scheduler. So uh, our scheduler is actually um, a full baked component that is actually um, something that has a UI portion as well as an API portion to completely customize it. So uh, it it uses our APIs actually behind the scenes. So we have our calendar API that allows you to like create events, um, view availabilities for people. And then we also have something called virtual calendars. And that is how we were able to um, power this use case um, that was very, very uh, um, complex and it had a lot of requirements. So I'm gonna jump into the problem statement and like some of the parameters we had to deal with. There were a few other parameters, but the really important ones are here. So um, we had a customer come to us saying that they had tried a few different scheduling solutions and their uh, use case was so complex that they couldn't get something that was flexible enough um, to work right out of the box. So we had to handle a lot of different parameters and we were on a tight timeline where we had to come up with a solution within a week. So the number of vaccinations uh, when you're at a single location can vary a lot based on um, who can sign up, where you're at, how many people they have to distribute the doses. Um, and then there's also the type of vaccination. So if you're coming in for your second shot then, and you had Moderna or Pfizer, then you needed to make sure that you had got the second shot of Moderna or Pfizer. And then the number of queues. So um, based on a given day, then the operating hours, they might have um, 100 different um, nurses or what we call jabbers distributing the vaccines to patients within a day. And at different times of the day, there might be 50 in the morning and then like 75 at night. And we also had to account for open hours and when people are busy. So if they needed to add a special block of time, uh, so Monday through Friday, everybody can, can work eight through five, but they might've needed to add a block for um, Tuesday afternoon, they could only do 20% um, of their normal capacity. And then, uh, they also had told us that they wanted to handle upwards of 20 million vaccines in a matter of months. So we had to make sure it was scalable and cover hundreds of locations and, bo and uh, bookings in bursts whenever they release uh, the vaccine scheduling. Uh, reminders, reschedules, and cancellations were kind of a given in any scheduling solution, and it needed to be quick. They needed to launch within a month of starting. Uh, to give you an idea of what our scheduler looks like, I've added this where you can see on the left, we have the uh, scheduling slot or the scheduling editor. So this is the typical UI that people use. 
uh, when you go in and you want to set up a different scheduler page, so you want it to be 30 minutes, an hour, and then that results in a link that you can share uh, with a calendar view and then time slot uh, pickers. And then you can also add custom fields. So if you want to ask um, what vaccine they had before, um, what age group they're in, what location they're at, uh, you could do all of that after you pick the time slot. So just wanted to give you a visual of what this actually looked like um, when deployed. And all of this as well, um, everything on the left you see with all these options can all be customized with the API. Uh, and in this use case, because it was so dynamic and um, go different from day to day, uh, our customer opted to use the API so that they could manually or automatically set up um, hundreds or thousands of different scheduler pages and change them and add blocks at different times. So uh, there's a feature with our scheduler and I think it's a pretty common one called round robin. So uh, that was really what we used in order to power this use case. And then we also ended up using virtual calendars. So a virtual calendar is identical to like a Google or a Microsoft calendar that you'd be using in like Outlook or um, Google Calendar, but it exists only in Nihilus so that um, they're lightweight and you can programmatically create millions of these if you need. So the functionality stays the same and it works with our scheduler, um, but it's more for representing a resource rather than an individual person where the um, individual person might have a, a calendar that exists on Google or Microsoft. Uh, these ones don't have that requirement, so they're really lightweight. And each, um, in this use case, each virtual calendar would represent like a patient queue or like a lane at the uh, COVID vaccination site. So if they have 100 lanes, then they would have 100 virtual calendars, and then we would round robin uh, between all 100 of those. And then when you fill up all 100 slots, then you know that there's no more um, there's no more open or available time slots at that given time of the day. And in this use case, we were doing 15 minute intervals. So uh, every 15 minutes um, from like eight in the morning until about five at night, they would have uh, a time slot times uh, X, which X is the number of virtual calendars that are in the round robin. And the virtual calendar also allows the ability to programmatically add blocks. Uh, so if, if they needed to add a block on Friday, uh, anytime after noon on Friday, they weren't available to give vaccinations or X percentage were, weren't available, they would just add that block programmatically and the scheduler would automatically account for um, that either lack of doses or lack of um, people to distribute the doses. And then um, once the virtual calendars are all set up, uh, that's where they get linked to the actual scheduler page. So the scheduler page is the UI for uh, how people book, how people can um, manually, if they want to go into the UI and um, set up some different configurations. And it's all powered so that um, when they create them, it links into our calendar API. So we have webhooks. And uh, so everything is responsive. So when people complete the booking, you redirect to our customer's platform. We send the whole payload so they have the confirmation of that. Any extra fields that they had in the form, like uh, location, age, um, any other um, fields that they would need for a COVID um, vaccine. And we had a couple different modes of the round robin as well. So we could either maximize fairness or we could maximize availability. Fairness means that you have 100 calendars in the round robin rotation, and then uh, you would want to go one by one through those and try to distribute the um, try to distribute the um, doses or appointments evenly across all of them. Or you could maximize availability. And in this case, um, with COVID, with COVID vaccines, you would probably want to maximize availability, which is what um, our, our biggest customer that did this um, used. 
where they wanted to just make sure that no doses ever expired. So um, when someone would go in, they would see any time slot that's available across the hundreds or thousands of different available slots for a given day. And then uh, what they can also do with the scheduler is the open hours. So the open hours uh, basically say which days of the week, uh, like on a standard week, are uh, people available to give vaccine doses. And most typically, you're going to see something like a Monday through Friday, or if they have like a Saturday, then they say these are the normal times that we're open. And then you can always just add a block programmatically for uh, when uh, when people are um, maybe busy or there's a, a special exception. And then there is a um, edit token as well. So each scheduler page um, can also be modified once you create it. You can um, config reconfigure it with the API and uh, maybe change the duration. And the link for each scheduler page is also returned via the API. So they can iframe this inside of their platform so people don't have to leave and go to like a non scheduler page. They can just stay right there. And they um, typically what you'd do is take this link and based on the location or the configuration, then each location would probably have a single scheduling link. And you just render that um, based on where the, the uh, patient is at. Um, an optional feature of this was the customer, uh, sometimes customers don't want to have to store the entire, uh, store a lot of state in their own database. So we also wanted to come up with a solution for them to use a virtual calendar uh, as like a master calendar for a given location uh, where they can track stats. So like how many people actually showed up um, to their appointments, if there were cancellations, uh, all of these different things. And they could track stats around how many of each type of uh, vaccine was given. And uh, this allowed them to basically bubble up these virtual calendars into a report so that they can see the dashboard and they can also return these, uh, uh, this information to anybody outside who would want to see that data. And then the flow for when a patient actually comes in is uh, that the patient can either call a like call center rep or they could go straight to a scheduling link so we needed to be able we needed the ability to allow a call center rep to book on behalf of another patient and then the also the ability for a patient to book directly for themselves through the browser so the patient would enter information in um, like typically their email address their name um, where they're located and then uh, any other fields like the age or vaccine type uh, that uh, were required for booking a COVID vaccine. And uh, the when the patient comes in, uh, they also had to do a little bit of heuristics on that um, scheduler page. So based on their location, uh, maybe the date, um, they would have to show the patient uh, one scheduler versus another one. So that was actually logic that our customer built in on top of it uh, so that we could have um, at each location, you could have typically uh, one scheduler page that corresponds to the entire location and has a number of virtual calendars behind it that represent all of the potential uh, throughput. So if they have 100 nurses, they have that 100 virtual calendars. And um, all of that logic was handled by Nihilus, but the logic for taking a patient's location and then mapping it to the link or scheduler page for that location uh, was handled by them. And uh, some of the use cases uh, for this were to add a little bit more to it. Um, they would need to uh, basically keep track of baselines. So if they had uh, 100 doses, on a Monday or each individual day, 
um, they might get extra doses or they have um, doses that didn't get distributed because of canceled appointments. Uh, they would have to add capacity for things like that uh, dynamically and with uh, short notice. So these were some other things that they, they needed to handle in all of this. And if they, um, in, the, in, in the operating hours that they had to work with, they wanted to add more or less. Um, they could either increase the uh, open hours, decrease the open hours, or add in more slots with the given open hours that they had. All right. And I got done a little bit early. <laughs> um, so if anyone has, I believe, like questions or... Thank you so much for that, Johnny. Um, very insightful. We appreciate all the amazing work that you're doing. Um, I have a couple of questions for you. Um, the first one is, how many COVID vaccines have you all helped to schedule over the course of you know, the, the time that you've been doing this work? Yeah, I think uh, the number the number is probably somewhere in the 20 million, um, like between 20 and 30 million. Wonderful. And that's across across regions? Yeah, so um, I know that we we did this for an entire state, and then um, that's where they they first did a test run with, and then uh, our biggest customer did this uh, across other states, and now they're actually doing this internationally as well. Um, we actually had a request from them uh, just this week to uh, add Portuguese language support uh, to handle like some South America South American countries, so. Um, yeah, the, the number is really only increasing and we've actually had a few different customers that use the same use case, um, but the, the primary one uh, handled uh, an entire state on the, the East Coast. Wonderful. And so you've kind of alluded a little bit. There's a question about, you know, just access to language and making sure that, you know, the resources that you all are, are providing support a wide range of um, language needs. And so how many, language, how many languages are you currently working in? And also how do you ensure that your systems are culturally um, relevant and set up in ways that support those sorts of barriers? Yeah, so right now I believe we use uh, English, Spanish, French, uh, Chinese, and um, I think Portuguese will probably be the next one. Uh, so um, we, we basically go based on demand. Uh, Primarily, we service in the U.S., uh, and then as uh, we have customers that are more and more international, we expand our, our language sets and localization for, for the different regions. Thank you. Our next question is, which vaccine have people tended to been um, to be more receptive to? So between, you know, so in the U.S., we have Johnson & Johnson, Pfizer, and Moderna. So for just kind of looking at the larger scope, which vaccine do people tend to gravitate towards and do you have a reason as to why that is? Uh, I, I wish I knew the answer to that one, but I actually don't have access to any of the data that our, our customers use for the vaccines. Um, I can only go off of what they have told us about the number of like total doses. So I don't really have the uh, actual stats because our customers integrate all of this and then um, we don't have access to uh, their actual system. Gotcha. Because uh, of HIPAA and right. plenty of other reasons. Yeah, no, that's, yeah, that's, that's a reasonable response. Thank you. Um, and then there's a question about just um, disparities in health and equity. And so, you know, during COVID, we saw tons of research on, you know, some of the disparities between communities of color and other historically marginalized groups. And so, how have you all managed some of these disparities as you are, one, designing your systems, but two, also actually rolling out um, so that people who actually need these, you know, these resources have access to them in real time? Yeah, so I think uh, just in general, um, from, from our standpoint, um, when we're just providing the tech, um, the best we can do is make it easy for everyone and accessible for everyone. And I think that's what we really tried to do with this solution was come up with something that 
um, people can schedule on behalf of other people to ensure that people who might not have access to a computer or um, might not um, be able to get into the system and do all this booking um, can still get uh, a vaccine appointment book just by calling on the phone. And then the booking flow, we've tried to keep as simple as possible too. Uh, so uh, we think that having uh, an easier way, and I know like from my experience, uh, with trying to schedule appointments, if you can just click on a couple buttons, um, it will increase the likelihood that a lot people, a lot more people will be able to get access to it. Thank you. And in terms of, you know, the actual process and what you've gone through, what would you say have been some of the biggest hurdles to getting to this point thus far? Um, yeah, I think some of the biggest hurdles were um, there's a lot of different features. So uh, in order to make this work, we, we launched our scheduler probably a, a year and a half ago now, or maybe uh, like a year and a half, two years ago. And we launched it basically as a pilot or a test. And uh, we've been constantly hearing feedback from the market uh, around like what features they want and how to support more and more use cases. So I would say it was really more of an iterative process and having a virtual calendar and, and making it support a virtual calendar rather than an actual person's calendar mm. uh, was also a, a pretty big step in this so that we can model a resource um, rather like an arbitrary resource like a vaccine um, lane or um, like we've had the example of people say, I want a calendar to represent a pool floating before. So uh, when, when we have that and then the, the scheduler and it all comes together, I think that's, um, that's pretty much where, it, where it came from, but there wasn't, I don't think there was really anything big besides trying to think up how this solution would work. Uh, that, that really was a big barrier. Yeah, I can imagine. Um, and so can you tell us a little bit about what's next for you, what's next for the company, just as you continue to innovate the ways in which people access these resources? Yeah, so um, I think that uh, we're really trying to expand our, we're, we're, we're kind of going for a breadth and depth approach. So um, the, the COVID vaccine solution, we know that we kind of nailed that one. So. There's not too much left on that, and we we work really closely with our customers using this solution. So we know um, it, is it adequate for them? Is it not? So I think for us, it's really just expanding more into um, the communication space and making uh, things like this a lot easier for people to pick up and and get get up and running quicker. So that um, if there's ever anything else that is like a, a, an emergency use case like this, that we're ready and we can actually support people to uh, get it built uh, in a timely manner so that we can save lives in this use case. Yeah, for sure. Well, thank you so much, Johnny. Um, we really appreciate all the work that you're doing. Can you share with us how people can reach you, how they can follow your work and how they can continue to engage with you um, during the conference and afterwards? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so um, my email is johnny at nihilist.com, J-O-N-N-Y at nihilist.com. Uh, I'm on LinkedIn, it's Johnny Hatch. Um, our website is nihilist.com. Um, we're on all the socials is nihilist, N-Y-L-A-S. Uh, so I'm happy to chat with anybody about this use case, any other use cases. Um, I love APIs too, so I'm happy to just chat about any other cool APIs out there. Wonderful, thank you so much for being here and we you know, we hope that you have a wonderful conference day um, as you, you know, as you continue to check out all the different stages. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you.